Season 14 has arrived, bringing with it a lot of new items and significant updates to existing ones. Here is my tier list for support items for 14.1b. In the current meta, enchanter items seem to have weakened, whereas engaged supports have experienced positive changes to their itemization. I'm going to go over all of the items and why I place them where they are, starting with Echoes of Helia. This is actually the saddest item in the game, and it's been this way since last season. Helia has great base stats for how cheap it is, but the damage and healing it provides is very underwhelming. Helia was changed so that you can have 3 shards instead of 2, but the problem with Helia is that it's not hard to stack the item, it's hard to trigger it with healing or shielding. Even pairing it with heals from other items, it just feels very weak overall. Dawncore would be a great item if it wasn't so expensive. Ideally, you want to build this item after you have a decent amount of mana regen to utilize first light. The issue with this is that support income falls off really hard towards the mid slash late game, so it's really hard to make 2700 gold around this stage. Dawncore is an amazing item for enchanters. It gives everything that they would want. I think it would easily become an A tier item if it was cheaper. I have Shirelia's Ardent and Staff of Flowing Water group because it's the easiest way to explore explain why they have been hard nerfed. In the past, it was optimal to pair Ardent and Staff with Shirelia's because the passive movement speed helped utilize the buffs on these items. Shirelia's got changed so that it no longer has the 20% increased movement speed through healing or shielding, which was a huge nerf to all three of these items. Shirelia's used to be a strong standalone item, which paired really well with Staff or Ardent, which made that synergy one of the strongest two item spikes in the game, but now that synergy has been nerfed and the items feel terrible by themselves and even paired. The new Shirelia's by itself is a husk of what it once was. Staff of Flowing Water gives 10% movement speed now, which is half of what the old Shirelias gave, but it feels bad to build first because the extra AP you give isn't utilized that well since you usually have an AD pairing. Ardent feels bad without having the constant moving speed for your carries to chase down enemies. As a result of these items being nerfed, I think enchanters are a lot weaker this season. Imperial Mandate was changed so that it deals all of its damage once a mark is consumed, and it does 12% of the target's current health, but its cooldown per champion increased to 9 seconds per champion. I'm not really too sure if it's any better because the item value is bugged and doesn't show how much damage it has done, but I think it's a decent item so I stuck it between A and B. Hopefully Riot shows the damage next patch so we can gauge how much it's actually doing. Starting off A, I have Zazak's Realm Spike. This is pretty much like an item form of Comet. If you are a poke champ that can utilize the passive well, it can do a lot as it has a base damage of 50 with a 15% AP ratio and does 3% of a target's max health with a 9-6 to six second cooldown. Numbers feel really strong, Zazax is a solid item. Umbral Glaive got a small change this season to be 300 gold more, but it has more lethality and melee champs do 3 damage to wards while range champs do 2 damage towards. Umbral is always a solid item to have, my only complaint is that it's a little expensive being 2600 gold. I'd much rather have it when it was cheaper, but the passive is so broken that it's fine. Dream Maker is one of the most solid choices for enchanters. You actually can't go wrong with choosing this as it has great numbers and honestly plays itself. You don't have to think about how you use it because it triggers when you heal or shield an ally. Zeke's got a big change in that it lost 15 armor and 5 ability haste, but the active was changed so that now when you cast your ult, you summon a storm for 5 seconds that deals 50 magic damage per second and slows enemies by 30%. Even though it lost a good amount of stats, I think this new active is worth it because now you don't have to rely on your teammates to utilize the item well and it works with a lot of support champions kits. It feels a lot more impactful. Trailblazer was so overtuned that they hotfixed it so that it costs 100 gold more and has 50 less health, but I still think the item is solid. It's pretty much the support version of Deadman's Plate and the movement speed you get and can give to your team is very useful. It helps a lot for your team's rotations and follow up on engages. Mikhail's didn't get any changes but will always be a solid item because of its unique unique ability to remove CC on anyone. It's not something you build every game, but in the right situation, it's a great option. Knight's Vow was changed so that it has 50 less health, no base health regen, but it has 20 increased armor. The passive and active is still the same, so it's still a great item. In my opinion, Knight's Vow has always been underrated, and it's an amazing option to go when one person on your team is popping off. Solstice Slay is a great item that both enchanters and engaged supports can use well. It's easy to trigger as you can slow or mobilize the enemy champ, and the extra health and movement speed is always nice. My only complaint about this item is that it's 20 seconds, which feels like a long time, but I think if it were any shorter, it would be pretty broken. Locket lost 10 ability haste and consecrate, but I still think it's a solid item. Honestly, you can never go wrong building it, the AoE shield will always be useful in most games. Not much to say about it, it's just all reliable. Moonstone had its mythic passive removed, but it had its base healing and shielding increased by 5%, has gone 50 more health, 25% more base mana region, but has 5 less AP. It's a pretty solid item on enchanters that can heal or shield a lot. Frozen Heart has no business being 2300 gold. It was changed last patch in that it's 400 gold less, but trade off 20 armor. I think Frozen Heart is one of the cheapest and best offensive items you can get as support now, and against the right team comp you can get insane value from it. Abyssal Mass did not get any changes and is the cheapest completed MR item. In a comp where you and the enemy have heavy AP, this item gets crazy value as it gives 60 MR and steals magic resist from enemies nearby. Even if you only have one AP user and you need MR, I think it's worth it because it's the cheapest MR item at 2400 gold. Redemption lost 50 health in the passive Harmony but gained 15 ability haste in the last update. Having an AoE heal that can 
can also do true damage that gives vision of an area that has 5500 range and can be used while dead for 2300 gold is broken. If you pair it with Moonstone, it becomes one of the strongest two item synergies in the game. Bloodsong is basically Sheen and Even Shroud combined and it's very overtuned. To put into perspective how broken it is, Even Shroud was nerfed when it caused the target to take increased damage at 10% but Bloodsong is 12% for melee and 8% for range and it's a lot easier to trigger. If you look at the top players on the ladder, you'll see a lot of them abusing Bloodsong with both melee and range supports. Finally at the top, we have Celestial Opposition which is basically Crown of the Shattered Queen. It's amazing that supports have the option to go this item as part of every build path, especially in a meta where burst is so high. This item will save you multiple times a game and will actually allow you to play in games where in the past you would just get one shot. That concludes my list. Overall itemization has been interesting to figure out what needs to be built every game and Season 14 has been very refreshing. I'm sure a lot of items are going to change and I'll probably change my mind for some items the more I play. Except for Helia. Fuck you Helia.